Roots and Remembrance is a project that commemorates the young men of Montreal West who lived among us and died for us. Since its inception in 2014, posters and banners of 42 World War II veterans, nine new this year, have been placed throughout the town indicating where the men lived, studied, and worshipped. This allows us to better understand how little of our town was left unaffected by the happenings across the Atlantic Ocean. With the creation of a walking tour map, we hope to provide a deeper glimpse into the lives of these individuals and the roles they played in a greater conflict. There were few battles where Canadians and Montreal Westers did not play a part. It is the sacrifice of these men that we commemorate each Remembrance Day and keep in our hearts every other day of the year. All historical and biographical information was provided by Dr. Robert Drummond, who is currently writing a book on the subject. The biographies were written by the GIS team of Montreal West Public Works. Note, the numbering system featured in the map is based on the geographic location of stops. It does not provide a particular suggested route. Donald Brain was born on November 5th, 1919, to Mr. George Henry, Commissioner for the Town of Montreal West from 1943 to 1953, and Mrs. Emily Sophia Patton Brain. He had three brothers, all of whom would serve overseas, including Thomas Brain, another Montreal West veteran, and a sister. He attended Montreal West High School, where he played basketball, junior hockey, and rugby. In 1939, Donald graduated from the Faculty of Arts at McGill University before moving to Winnipeg, Manitoba. On January 15, 1940, Donald enlisted with the Princess Patricia's Canadian Light Infantry and arrived in the UK in June 1940. On February 28, 1942, Donald married Lucy Violet Stewart Menteth, with whom he had one son, Donald Rowan. Up until 1942, the Princess Patricia's Canadian Light Infantry trained for the anticipated German invasion of the southeast coast of England. After 1942, the infantry took on a more offensive approach. On June 28, 1943, the Patricias sailed down to Italy as part of Operation Husky, the Allied invasion of Sicily. Although the operation was successful, with the majority of Italy invaded by late October, the now major rain was sidelined with infectious hepatitis in October and December of 1943. On the day of his return to the battalion, which was now engaged along the Moro River in the hopes of breaching the German defensive line in Western Italy, Major Brain was hit by German artillery fire and died instantly. Major Donald Brain is commemorated at St. Philip's Church with a stained glass window. He was 24 years old. He won his majority on the battlefield, known and loved by all his troops, an excellent soldier, a fine gentleman, and, and a valued company commander. Speaking of Major Donald Brain in a letter to his family. Thomas Reginald Brain. Thomas Reginald Brain was born on June 13, 1921, to
to George Henry and Emily Sophia Brain. He had a sister and three brothers, one of whom was Donald Brain, another Montreal West veteran. He attended St. Philip's Church where he served as an altar server. His favorite sports included hockey, rugby, baseball, and tennis. He was educated at Elizabeth Ballantyne and then Montreal West High School. He briefly attended Sir George Williams College, studying commerce and later studied bookkeeping and accounting for one year prior to entering the, for the workforce. He enlisted with the Royal Montreal Regiment on March 23rd. 1942. Thomas served with the Royal Canadian Ordnance Corps in England as a clerk from July 20th, 1942. When he noticed, noticed a lump in his armpit and another on his neck a week later, he reported to the medical officer on November 11, 1943. He was subsequently admitted to No. 2 Canadian General Hospital with a diagnosis of Hodgkin's lymphoma. Upon his return to Canada, he was admitted to St. Anne's Hospital on January 7, 1944, and was discharged from the Army for medical reasons later that month. On September 2, 1946, Lance Corporal Brain passed away in the Royal Victoria Hospital. Thomas is commemorated at St. Philip's Church where his name is carved into the second step of the altar on the Apostle side, indicating the place where he knelt for years before the war as an altar server. He was 25 years old. They served God at his altar, assisting and serving the rector at the altar with devotion and reverence. They served their country in time of need and were called to a wider service in his church expectant. Noble boys, good companions of rector, and true friends. The, memori the memorial dedicated by Rector Canon Charles Ireland to four of his altar servers. Forrest Walker Wiggins. Forrest Walker Wiggins was born on October 8, 1912, in York County. Toronto, to Forrest Norman and Lillian May Wiggins. An only child, Forrest and his parents moved to Montreal in 1924, where his father would become mayor in 1953, serving five consecutive terms. The family were members of the United Church. He attended Montreal West High School before studying at McGill University from 1929 to 1933. He was a keen sportsman and took an active part in all sports. Interested in an army career for many years, Forrest was first a cadet, then a member of McGill's contingent of the Canadian Officers Training Corps, where he rose to the rank of lieutenant before joining the military. He served with the 2nd Field Brigade, Royal Canadian Artillery, from March 5, 1935 until November 1, 1936, where he transferred to the Royal Canadian Regiment. He transferred back to the artillery on January 1, 1938. In 1939, Forrest married Dorothy Isabel Wiggins of London, Ontario before being transferred overseas on December 15, 1940. Once there, he was promoted to captain and became adjutant to the 1st Anti-Aircraft Regiment on February 1, 1941. He died accidentally of carbon monoxide poisoning on March 23, 1941. He was sleeping in a room in which an open coal fire was burning. The chimney vent became closed by the fall of an iron flap. He was 28 years old. Captain Wiggins is buried at Brookwood Military Cemetery in Surrey, England.
Hugh Cameron Fulton. The only son of John and Mary Fulton, Hugh Cameron Fulton was born on September 23, 1922, in Lethbridge, Alberta. Hugh attended Montreal West High School, where he played junior hockey before entering the Faculty of Science at McGill University. At McGill, he competed on the track and field and was a member of the university's regimental training battalion. After half a semester, however, Hugh's father died suddenly, and he decided to work in order to save his mother the burden of putting him through college. He worked for the Bell Telephone Company as a collector before enlisting in the Royal Canadian Navy Volunteer Reserve on June 16, 1942. Hugh underwent his training at HMCS King's in Halifax, now University of King's College, and was posted on HMCS Alberni upon graduation. In April 1944, HMCS Alberni was one of 17 Royal Canadian Navy ships sent to the UK in support of Operation Neptune, the landings at Normandy. In June and July, she escorted a miscellaneous collection of landing crafts and ships between Southampton Water and the Five Beaches, but was sunk by German U-boat 480 while conducting an anti-submarine patrol in the area of the main shipping lanes to the Normandy beaches. 59 of the 90 men on board lost their lives, including Lieutenant Fulton. He was 21 years old. No man thought more of his mother than did you. We often talked about home and you always had something nice to say about his mother. Captain Ian Bell in a letter to Hugh's mother. Clarence Dexter Bud Schnebley. The only son of four children, Clarence Dexter Schnebley was born on April 10, 1912 in Montreal West. The family were members of the Montreal West United Church, and he attended Elizabeth Ballantyne School and Montreal West High School before entering McGill University for Engineering in 1929. In his spare time, Clarence enjoyed photography and writing fiction and articles for newspapers and magazines. He was additionally mechanically inclined putting him in a good position to work in the printing and advertising industries in Canada, Montreal and Ottawa, and the United States, New York, before he enlisted with the Royal Canadian Air Force on July 20th, 1940. After completing his flight training in Regina and Prince Albert, Saskatchewan, Clarence became a flight instructor in Dauphin, Manitoba, until his discharge from the Royal Canadian Air Force on May 30th, 1942. He then joined the United States Army Air Corps where he was attached to the 335th Bomb Squadron. He flew his first mission on May 13, 1943 to Saint-Omer, France, attacking an aircraft factory. On May 21st, 1943, on the squadron's sixth mission, 15 aircraft took on, took on a mission against submarine pens in Emden, Germany. Only one failed to return. First Lieutenant Schnebley was 31 years old. First Lieutenant Schnebley was posthumously awarded the Air Medal for meritorious achievement while participating in aerial flight and the Purple Heart. Wilfred Bark was born on March 1, 1922, to Cyril and Edna Bark in Toronto, Ontario. 
His family moved to Montreal West in 1926, where he was a member of the United Church and attended Montreal West High School. He had a long-standing interest in sailing and served five years as a sea cadet sailing naval whalers and a schooner, although he also enjoyed skiing, hockey, tennis, football, and horseback riding. He briefly studied science at Sir George Williams University, then worked as a clerk with Canadian Industries Limited for two years prior to enlisting with the Royal Canadian Navy on January 13, 1942. He received his initial naval training in Montreal and at King's College in Halifax, Nova Scotia, after which he was posted to HMCS Weyburn as a sub-lieutenant on July 20, 1942. In September 1942, HMCS Weyburn was among the Canadian corvettes assigned to the invasion of North Africa, known as Operation Torch. HMCS Weyburn served as a convoy escort until February 22, 1943, when she hit a mine near Gibraltar, planted by U-boat 118 three weeks earlier. Sub-Lieutenant Bark was asleep in his bunk when the first explosion came, but he nevertheless managed to make his way to the bridge, where he helped revive the captain, who was knocked unconscious by the blast. The Weyburn started slipping below the surface, and detonators that were jammed exploded, killing some men in the water, including Sub-Lieutenant Bark. In total, total, eight members of the Weyburn were lost. For his part in the gallant rescue work, Wilfred Bark was posthumously mentioned in dispatches. Sub-Lieutenant Bark was the youngest officer on board the Weyburn. He was 21 years old. You don't realize how dumb you are until you hit the sea, and if people were not considerate, life would be mighty tough. In a letter home. Lord George Higginson Lord George Higginson was born on April 6, 1917, to Clifford Gladstone and Margaret Elliot Higginson of Montreal West. He attended Elizabeth Ballantyne School from 1923 until 1930, and then Montreal West High School until 1936, where he played on the senior rugby team. He was additionally an accomplished equestrian and enjoyed hockey, track and field, tennis, baseball, and shooting. He apprenticed at A.K. Clark Company until 1938 and worked as a leather salesman before enlisting in the Royal Canadian Air Force on September 5, 1940. Lloyd completed his initial training in Toronto with John Freeland another Montreal West veteran, finishing his number four elementary and number nine service flying training in Windsor Mills, Quebec, and Summerside, Prince Edward Island, respectively. On October 11, 1941, he was posted to number 405 Squadron RCAF, which was the first bomber squadron of the Royal Canadian Air Force formed overseas. His first operational flight after he arrived in Britain was a Cook's Tour raid on Turin, Italy. He completed a total of 22 bombing missions, including the first 1,000 bomber mission against Cologne on May 30, 1942, major operations against Rostock and Lubeck, and the bombing of ammunition plants near Paris. On the night of June 8, 1942, Halifax DG-224 took off from RAF Pocklington, Yorkshire, on a raid against Essen. It was later reported to have been shot down near Sinnersdorf, Germany. In memory of pilot officer Higginson, the organ chimes were amplified at, in the Montreal West United Church. He was 25 years old.
pilot officer of Higginson is buried in the Rheinberg War Cemetery near Camp Lindfort in Germany. Robert Warren Conway. Robert Warren Conway was born in Outremont on May 30th, 1917 to Herbert Roy Conway and Gladys Gertrude Brown. The family moved to Montreal West in the early 1930s. Robert attended Montreal West High School, graduating in 1934 with honors in elementary geometry. He participated in a variety of sports, including basketball, rugby, hockey, and tennis, and according to his high school yearbook, tap dancing. He studied commerce at McGill University until 1936 and then stenography at Sir George Williams College for a year prior to entering the workforce as a junior clerk in an accountant's office. On August 24, 1940, Robert enlisted with the Royal, Royal Canadian Air Force. He completed his initial training in Toronto, followed by flying and further training in Ontario, overlapping with Richard Lang, another Montreal West veteran, at number 12 Elementary Flying Training School in Goderich. He finally trained as a flying instructor and taught elementary flying training in Alberta upon graduation. From January 11, 1943 until April 9, 1943, Robert was posted to number 34 Operational Training Unit in New Brunswick, at which point Pilot Officer Conway was transferred overseas, where he was posted to number 42 Operational Training Unit at Ashbourne, Derbyshire. On August 23, 1943, Whitley 4339 took off from RAF Ashbourne on a routine cross-country training flight. Despite a weather forecast of fair to fine, the aircraft was witnessed to crash into the River Severn about 15 miles from Newport. It exploded upon impact. Robert was 23 years old a student of dance whose flying feet delight with savage, swift, barbaric beat. High School Yearbook Entry. Charles Peter Rogers Stevens. Charles Peter Rogers Stevens was born in Kingston, Jamaica on April 17, 1922 to George Roy and Zilla Louise Stevens. The family sailed from Jamaica to Montreal and Charles was baptized at the Montreal West United Church on December 24 of the same year. Because of his father's position as Canadian Trade Commissioner, Charles lived in six countries by the age of five, including Cuba, Peru, and South Africa, where his two younger brothers were born. The family eventually moved to Montreal West in 1934. The Stevens family would continue to occupy the same house from when it was built in 1895 to 2011. Charles graduated from Montreal West High School and then attended the Royal Military College, but left after a year to join the Royal Naval Volunteer Reserve as an acting lieutenant. His goal was to become a pilot with the Fleet Air Arm, the branch of the Royal Navy responsible for the operation of naval aircraft. In 1944, Charles was assigned to number 1772 Naval Air Squadron, which in combination with three other squadrons composed the fleet of the indefatigable fleet carrier. With 14 fleet carriers, 6 light fleet carriers, 25 cruisers, 10 battleships, 75 destroyers, and over 1,300 aircraft, the combined British Task Force No. 38 was the largest armada ever assembled in history and was slated for a final assault on Japan. 
On July 28, 1945, Lieutenant Stevens was the leader of an escort for an Avenger torpedo bomber strike against Harima Shipyard, Ube, Honshu, Japan. Lieutenant Stevens was last seen when his flight split up to attack a number of luggers, small sailing vessels. He was 23 years old. He was very easy to work with, but if you erred in terms of accurate and sensible, safe flying, he could be hard as nails. He was supremely confident, competent as a naval officer and as a pilot. He was so eminently dependable and trustworthy, I suppose that in many ways he was a complex character, but he was fun to be with for he had a wry sense of humor and was capable of enormous kindness and selflessness. Teddy Key in his book, The Friendly Squadron.